extremely easy. Should take you all of maybe five minutes as long as you have the stuff behind you. Um, yeah, and it's fairly simple. The biggest thing that you might not have um, of this information that you're going to need here is a copy of your driver's license, or really a copy of a driver's license of anyone who is more than a 20% owner. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward, name, federal ID number, and stuff like that. So I'm going to go and show you. Um, I'm actually going to do one like I would be doing it for my business. Um, but for whatever reason, accounting firms actually are not required to do it. We are exempt. Um, I'll even show you how to do it on here because you can even put an exemption. Now, as far as exemptions, there is a number of businesses that do not have to file this one. The only one that would really be applicable for shops out there is if you are an applicable large business, meaning that you've had over $5 million in annual sales, you do not need to file. Um, well, you can file on here and get an exemption. So I will show you how to go down through this. Um, as you saw, I clicked on their file report. If you want to do a PDF copy, you can do that here. I do not recommend doing a PDF copy. Um, it's not going to show you if you miss something. And there's something on here that's a little bit confusing that's tripped up a couple people already. So I wanted to kind of show that. So if we go down through here, I agree. So first page on here everyone is going to be doing initial report for right now. Um, if you have messed up a report, you can correct it and update it. Um, or if you are starting a new business in 2024, um, this would be the newly exempt entity um, if you're changing over. But 99.9999% of people select option A here. So you click on next. So this one on here, we're going to request to receive the FinCEN ID. There should not be anyone that has a FinCEN ID already. It's extremely rare that you would have one. So click on that one. Number five is pretty easy, right? So we go on here, Power Mellis and Associates is going to be our name. And this is just going to be whatever your legal name is. If you have a doing business as, you can put that under there, right? Let's say that you have an LLC of Hunt's LLC, but my doing business as name is Hunt's Auto Repair. That's where I would put it right in there. So we keep on going down here, form of identification. And so we're going to do an EIN number. So all of this right here is going to be for the business. And so I put in my EIN number on here. And so then we got country of jurisdiction. If you have a business up in a foreign country, select another one. Most of you, United States here. We form this in Maryland. No local tribes formation, um, nothing like that. Um, current address on here. We're going to go 602 Center Street, Suite 101. And if you go on here and if you hover over, you can see that it does give you a little bit of information. If you get hung up on here, there's these things where it says need help, and you can read the instructions. And so we are in Mount Airy, United States. Try that again, Maryland, 21771. All right, so we click on next here. So this is the one that is really tripping people up because this is where you have the company applicant, right? And so if you have existing reporting company, and so essentially what this means is, hey, we've already had this existing business. It was already in existence before 2024. That is gonna be the case for, again, all of you guys, unless you set up this company in 2024. This is what's really been kind of tripping people up here because if you check this, if you look down here, it still has asterisks on this stuff. See, it still is red. It's just not a good website, right? So if you uncheck this, you can see all of that stuff is still red. But if you actually read the instructions, once you check this, none of this page is actually applicable any longer. And you can go to the next page. And so here is really where the meat and potatoes of what they're trying to do here, right? They're trying to figure out who the beneficial ownership is. Now, if you are a large organization, right, a large company over $5 million in sales, you can go ahead and you can check this one. 
And if you check that one, then that's it, right? All you need to do is put the entity's legal name in there, hit next, right? So I do par, Mellis, and associates. Hit next, and I'm done. Now, most of you guys are not going to be exempt on here. Um, even if your shop is exempt, maybe your rental LLC, um, loaner car LLC is not. So I will show you what you need to do for those of you that are not exempt. So if we go here, so legal name and date of birth. And so this is beneficial owner. So this would be people that actually own the business. And so last name on here. For those that don't know, Jacob is my real name. Hunt is my middle name, but there you go. Just for identity theft issues, don't try to send me a birthday card. This is not my real birthday. Um, again, I love you guys too, but I won't give you my home address here. So I'm just going to show you on here of what we fill out. So again, this is home address right on there. And then this is the only other thing that you got to do down here. So if you go here, we got, you can do passport, you can do um, driver's license. I just have a driver's license in front of me. So I'm going to do that. And then on your driver's license, you take the code uh, D562. Right, this was issued by the United States of America and Maryland. And then the last thing on here is you just got to get a copy of your license, drag it over here, boom, done. That's it. It's really pretty simple here. Now, if this is just for one owner, right? So you don't need to check this stuff. You don't have a FinCEN ID, so you can leave that blank on here. If you only have one owner, you're done and you hit next. If you have another owner, all you do is just click add beneficial owner and put it on here. You can see they don't ask how much this person owns. They don't ask any of that stuff. It just says, hey, this is a beneficial owner, which by default, if you're putting them on here, means that they owe, own over 20%. So one, five, eight, whatever you have, enter in them in here and then go ahead and hit next. Once you do that, email address, right? So we just do Hunt and Parmelis right here. We do Hunt and Parmelis right here. Once you fill that out, you agree to this. And now this is yelling at me here because we have this beneficial owner. I'm gonna remove that one. So essentially, if you can check, if it lets you check this box, you don't get any error messages, it means that you're good to go. Now, I am not gonna go and submit this. I gotta actually change and put my correct federal ID number in here. But essentially all I gotta do is I gotta prove that I am not a robot which is kind of funny because I feel like a robot can probably figure this out now. Maybe not because a human can't even figure this out. And then you just click submit B-O-I-R, right? And so what did that take? Five, eight minutes. And I was kind of showing you guys a couple of different ways. This is very quick. This is very easy. Um, have a copy of your driver's license. And that is really the only thing that you probably don't know off of the top of your head. Um, you go ahead and click submit on this one. And that's it. You're done. Um, we're going to have to start doing these on an annual basis, whether your guys are going to have to keep on using this website. If I had to guess what they're going to end up doing is they're going to kind of combine this stuff and allow us to report it um, on your tax returns. As you can see, all of this information is included on your K-1, right? They know your home address. They know your social security number. And for some of you guys might not even realize it, um, for uh, security purposes, a lot of times when we e-file your personal tax returns, we actually have to get a copy of your driver's license anyways. So why you guys have to do this, why they're making this requirement, I'm not sure. Um, you have plenty of time to do this. The deadline for this is if you're in existence before January 1st of 2024, you have the entire year to do this. Um, not something to drop everything and do it now, but don't overthink this. Do not pay someone to do this. It's extremely easy. Um, and like I just showed you, should take about five minutes of your day to get this thing knocked out and be done with it. So um, go ahead, try it out. If you run into any issues, you can always give us uh, a shout here at Parmelis. 
um, whoever you work with on a monthly basis, reach out to them um, and they should be able to get you what you need. And if you're really hanging up on some stuff, you know, don't spin your wheels. Don't get too frustrated on it. Um, like I said, this middle part here, this company applicant is what has tripped a couple people up because even though you check that box and it says, hey, you don't need to do any more of this page, it will still let you type stuff in there. And actually, if you check that box and then type stuff in there, it gives you a different error message on there. But hey, government's websites, uh, not getting any easier on it. But really, this is something that I wouldn't lose too much sleep over. So hopefully that was helpful for you. And I will talk to you a little bit later. Thanks.